Thank you for that, Adish. A very good morning and good afternoon to all our colleagues in Taiwan, in Taipei Hub. Um, welcome everybody to this fifth uh, Science Awareness and the Early Career Research Sustainability Series talk on health sensitization. Uh, an honor to introduce all our speakers today. We have Dr. Fan who's joining us from Taipei. Uh, she is a postdoctoral research at the School of Public Health. And her expertise includes human health assessment, human heavy metal exposures, freshwater ecology, and ethnic macro invertebrate identification. And I'm glad that Taipei Hub is doing this program in collaboration with the South Asia Hub. I welcome Dr. Yen. Um, the title of her talk today, she's gonna talk to us and deliber deliberate uh, her talks on the socioeconomic disparities, especially uh, affecting children's learning and doing so by investigating hair heavy metal concentration in urban households. Look forward to your talk, Dr. Fan. Our next speaker is Dr. Parmesh. Dr. Parmesh is very much a part of our uh, member at the Divecha Center for Climate Change at the Indian Institute of Science. Uh, he is a pediatric pulmonologist and an environmentalist, a chair to many organizations worldwide, and also co-chair of the International Pediatric Association of Environment, Health, and Climate Change. And Dr. Parmesh also leads the South Asia focus program on the health sensitization parts, besides being a member of many other organizations in the institution. Uh, Dr. Parmesh's talk is going to be about climate implications on planetary health and the way forward. And it is a pleasure and honor also to introduce uh, Dr. Sundar, who's been associated with the Future Earth South Asia and Future Earth uh, Secretariat for a very long time. He's a member of a national committee, Future Earth. And he is, in his capacity, the executive director of INRIM Foundation, that is the Indian Natural Resource Economics and Management Foundation. And he works mainly in the two areas of water harvesting and groundwater management, but he also looks into all the nexuses. And it is an honor for me to invite the speakers as well as Dr. Sundar to moderate this session. Uh, this session, uh, like all other webinars, I would like to say that is part of our uh, webinar series, which we aim to culminate in the form of a, a quiz program for young career researchers at the end of 2024. And with me, I also have Dolly, who is the coordinator from the Taipei Hub. And we have other colleagues, Adish, Rianne, and Harshita, who will be helping with all technical sessions. Please put in all your questions, raise hands if you have any questions, because we are going to have a very interactive session at the end of the talks. So with that, I give it to Dr. Fan. Dr. Fan, please, if you could uh, proceed with your presentation. Okay, yeah, thank you. And uh, I share my screen first. Okay, uh, is this clear? Yes. Okay, then uh, uh, I'll start my talk. Uh, good, good morning and good afternoon, everyone. My name is Yan Sifan and from uh, Taip, uh, from Graduate Institute of uh, environmental engineering, uh, National Taiwan University. And uh, it's my honor to be here to share my research. And uh, I will talk about my research in the past three years and uh, what is related to children health. And, uh, and uh, uh, today's topic is uh, uh, is social economic disparities and children's learning, investigating hair heavy metal concentration in urban households. And firstly, I briefly uh, introduce myself. I'm now the postdoc researcher at uh, the Environmental Engineer at the Graduate in Institute of Environmental Engineering, National Taiwan University. And uh, in the past two years, I worked at School of Public Health, Taipei Medical University, 
And a, a today's topic is related to human health. I will share my research in uh, this time. And I also participate in Future Earth Taipei, and I'm the working member uh, of the uh, Future Earth Taipei ECR and also uh, the SRI Asia Spotlight Events ECR Fellow this year. And my research interests include health risk assessments, uh, hair, cortisol, heavy metals, freshwater ecology, and freshwater invertebrate identification. Yeah, and uh, move to uh, the uh, the topic today um, the, to talk about the children's development. We need to know four development domains for children, physical, uh, cognitive, language, and social emotion. The physical domain uh, indicates the development of children's body skills, uh, performance, and uh, including both gross motor and fine motor development. And the cognitive uh, domain are related to the function of the brain, such as thinking, knowing, remembering, and problem solving. The language uh, domain indicates the learning lang language, including communication, language, and conversation. And the social emotional uh, domain uh, indicates uh, the children learn to control their perceptions of feelings and social etiquette. And uh, before the children attend to school, we can commonly uh, classify them into four stages. First are newborn babies. Newborn, ba newborn babies at the first three months, they control over their arms, uh, legs to develop their physical function. And they smile, cry for needs, and they listen to voice uh, as they start learning language. And they show interest in faces and objects. And in this, in this slide, I will use different color words to mention the four domains we mentioned before. And later, it's become the infant stage, which is at age three to 12 months. And in this stage, infants can infants start to crawl and walk. They uh, love when happy, cries for uh, annoyed, and they can hug. And they started to learn language by bubble and to recognize names and the gesture. And, and the infants can, are interested in object patterns, uh, shapes, and they try new things. And followed are the toddlers, which is at age one to three years old. And they use tools, they drums and hops, and they are easily to express their emotion and understand uh, the feelings. And they can speak many words, ask questions and describe things and they are uh, uh, develop the logic and they can recognize the colors and counts. And followed uh, the preschool stage, which, uh, which uh, uh, at this stage, children can dress by themselves. They can wash dishes, hold pens, and they make friends uh, to share others with their likes, their dislike, and they can use complex sentences to tell stories, and they can recognize what is wrong and what is right, and they can tell lies. And in urban region, toxicants can are everywhere. Pollu polluted sources from a factory, from vehicle uh, fertilizer, trash, and cigarettes, and house painting. Uh, those can emit the toxicants such as lead, cadmium, mercury, and, and arsenic into the environments like air, or water, or soil. And when the people uh, live here or children live here, they can easily expose to those uh, in, uh, the toxicants and uh, fire touching, fire inspiration, or uh, eating. And these toxicants can accumulate in the hair or the nails, like fingernails or toenails. And if the children have high uh, level of uh, heavy metals, it could damage the neural functions and they have poor skills, recognition ability and learning skills. And uh, children has high risk to heavy metal pollutions comparing to adults because they have small body size. They're, uh they are not still they are still growing so their uh, detoxification mechanism is not well developed so uh, this makes them to become the vulnerable population in the urban because the heavy metals are the 
are known as transmit uh, neuron transmitters. Uh, to so uh, it can uh, block the normal nerve transductions and lead to children uh, the neuron development delays, IQ reduction, and uh, ADHD symptoms. And uh, instead of environments, previous study also uh, also found that children's heavy metal burdens are also associated to several social factors, including family, socioeconomic st status, and the parental e education. And commonly, when children who had higher heavy metal burdens are uh, referred to lower family socioeconomic status and lower uh, parental education level. And this can let the children, uh, because children, because uh, the, the lower awareness of heavy metal hazards can let children exposed to the uh, hazard risks. And uh, the family's behavior also uh, is a risk factor. Uh, there are several studies shows that when children have high heavy metal burden, it's uh, related to uh, their environment with, uh, associated to the secondhand smoking uh, environments. And also higher heavy metal burdens are, uh, indicates uh, they live uh, in close to the industrial region or uh, the traffic uh, region. Also, we talk about uh, lots of risks of heavy metals on children's learning. Studies also show that, that parents' involvement in children's care can mediate the effects, the adverse effects of socioeconomic status. With uh, parents' involvement uh, in uh, child care, uh, children gain more learn opportunities. They establish a uh, good mental status. Uh, they learn uh, the language development and they have stable emotion and uh, self-esteem and also optimistic personalities. So uh, the positive, these positive effects cannot be ignored during uh, children's growth. Our research team care about the health of children and their parents in particular uh, during the prenatal and postpartum uh, stage. We conduct the cohort study in Taiwan, and this project is led by Taipei Medical University. And uh, the project uh, are started from 2011. Until now, there are over 2,000 uh, households participate in this study. And in this project, we uh, there are many topics we care about, including uh, parents' uh, health during pregnancy stage, the quality of living environment, the parental mental health, child development, uh, positive emotion, parents child interaction, sleep quality, and other factors. And today, uh, I will share part of the result of this project. Uh, they are uh, 155 households from greater Taipei area. And this area is highly urbanized area in Taiwan, which are the main two districts, uh, Taipei City and New Taipei City. And these uh, two districts are mixed type of land use, including residential, agricultural, and industrial region, which means that children live he living here can uh, expose to heavy metal from various sources. And comparing to uh, total Taiwan Ireland, uh, the population density and family income are much higher in greater Taipei area. And uh, our study cohorts uh, provide us uh, their hair samples. And then uh, we did an analysis, we measured the heavy metal concentrations uh, of uh, each members uh, to know their heavy metal burden uh, of family member. And also we measure the cortisol concentration of the hair. Uh, as, as you can see here, here's the pictures shows human, the uh, concept of human endocrine system. Uh, there are three typical endocrine pathways, uh, HPA, HPG, and HPT. And cortisol is one of the uh, metabolic hormones involved in HPA pathway. And this, uh, this pathway is known as the stress responses. 
So uh, if uh, the person who had higher hair cortisol level, it means that uh, he or she had higher perceived stress. And uh, because we try to know the learning environment for children in our study cohorts, uh, we also asked parents to do the survey. It helped us to know, uh, to identify the quality of child home learning environment. And the survey are referred to the uh, home observation for measurements of environments. We include five items. First is how often does your child have access to book? And the second, how about how many, if any, color size or shape learning toys does your child have? And the third, about how many toys does your child have that uh, require fine motor skills like crying, coloring, beating, coloring books, or puzzles? And the fourth and fifth are associated to language. How often do I encourage my child to learn the alphabet? And how often do I speak to my child in normal language rather than baby language? So move to uh, our results. Our study cohorts can be identified into two groups, uh, HMH family and HML family. It's based on the heavy metal level in uh, children. The children who had at least three heavy metal above the population median, we classified into HMH family. And otherwise, it will be uh, the HML family. And comparing to these two families, uh, these two groups, uh, HML family, uh, the groups, uh, the parents age at uh, HML uh, group are a bit older than uh, HMH family, but the children's age are similar. And um, we found that family incomes of HMH family were high proportions of lower than 60,000 a month, uh, the, the family incomes. And according to the average uh, consumption expedition in Taiwan, which is 815,000 NT per year per household, it means that families uh, in Great Taipei City, in Great Taipei area, uh, whose family income monthly uh, less than $60,000 uh, are a bit difficult for uh, those families. So uh, we can uh, say that HMH family are uh, represent the low income urban households from Great Taipei area and uh, the HML family are higher income urban households from Great Taipei area. And uh, here shows the mm -hmm. hair heavy metal concentrations for children, mother and uh, fathers. Family members in HMH family shows higher uh, arsenic, cadmium, mercury, and lead label in children, and also the similar pattern in uh, parents, uh, uh, in, in particular to mercury in mother and uh, lead in father. Instantly, we found very different children's learning environment results in response to heavy metal concentrations and parent-child interactions between HMH and HML family. Here, the uh, results shows uh, the relationship between heavy metal concentrations and children's learning environments. In HMH family, cadmium and mercury were negative effects and uh, several study shows that a uh, high cadmium uh, level can refer to the smoking or smoking environments or lower socioeconomic status. And also uh, high cadmium and mercury burdens in children were related to uh, lower dietary perception, perceptions and protect, protective behaviors of their caregivers. And comparing to the HML family, which has no statistic uh, significance correlations between heavy metal burden and the uh, children's learning environments, we suggest that HMH families uh, had higher risk of financial limitations and poor environments and less cognitive of hazards of their caregivers. And these were these children uh, to, uh, to have high risk of poor learning sources. And uh, on the other hand, 
our results reveal, reveal significant increase in children's learning environments by enhancing uh, the parent-child interactions, in particular to HMH, HML family, like these results show here. Uh, the children's uh, learning can benefit more from uh, parents' involvement uh, from H, uh, in HML family rather than HMH family. And we also found that children benefit uh, learning of books, colors, toys, alphabets, and words uh, more from mothers than fathers. It means it can refer to the mothers are the primary caregivers in most of uh, Asian families. And further, uh, the results also showed that fathers' roles are the many playmates because uh, the results shows many increase, uh, enhance the learning by color, color things or toy toys. And uh, it also suggests that fathers are commonly low conscious to their children's needs uh, in most Asian family comparing to the mothers. And uh, we further uh, anal analyze the uh, hair cortisol label in hair. And the results showed that uh, hair cortisol concentrations uh, shows the, the more vulnerable of children from HMH family because uh, the results revealed higher correlations among family members. Here shows uh, in uh, HMH family rather than HML families. So this indicates uh, the high risk of negative health outcomes of children from HMH fa family, in particular to uh, those parents with higher stress. Uh, so uh, several findings reveal different impacts on children's learning between HMH and HML groups. Here, I summarize uh, our findings of these two groups. Uh, for HMH family, uh, the children with high heavy metal burdens with lower uh, family incomes and uh, the risk factors of the children from this family include uh, fi family financial ties, uh, poor living environments, lower educated parents, which has lower awareness of toxicants, and the less benefits of parent-child interactions, and they increase perception to their parents' stress. And um, at another group, HML group, which children had lower uh, heavy metal burden with higher income uh, in uh, from great type area. And this less adverse effects of heavy metal on children's learning because they have better financial status and living environments. And what much, much better is that they can benefit through the interactions with their parents. So by comparing the, our results to other uh, city in uh, to other urban area city, uh, as you can see here, here is our uh, this study, and the green part uh, shows the uh, some city from uh, Asian area, and the blue parts are from Europe. Europe, and our results shows that uh, the heavy burden in children are lower than are lower from greater type area comparing to other uh, city like Beijing, Huanan, uh, Rome, Amsterdam, or Madrid. However, we still discover uh, totally different results of children's learning environments from uh, HML and H HML and HMH family uh, groups. So this could imply that a socioeconomic disparities on children developments uh, can be also uh, shown in other regions. So in particular to the under climate change, uh, children may have uh, increased risk of accumulating heavy metals. Uh, like uh, when increasing the global heat, the high and extreme temperature where lack of water in soil is may lead to the black of plant respiration and photosynthesis, and it's increased uptake of uh, the heavy metal by plants. So it's increased oral pathways uh, to that the children exposed to heavy metal. And the heavy rain and flooding can uh, trigger the resuspension of polluted sediments, uh, increase the flux weighted heavy metal to 
lower than uh, most of the urban region. And this increase uh, the uh, heavy metal exposure for children via touching. And the dry weather with drought or dust storm can uh, result in with suspension of urban dust and it's the contaminants were distributed to the air particle and children can uh, expose more by inhalation. And also in uh, under the rapid urban development, inequality of economics in cities can be the problem of uh, urban poor. Under the rapid uh, development, it's well widened in per inequality gaps in urban place. And there are 400 million people in Asia and the Pacific has uh, suffered from extreme poverty. As you can see the, the figure here, the urban poor proportion are really high, especially in Asia and the Middle East area. And what's the worst is that the parents uh, who uh, had higher financial pressure, commonly have higher workload and higher and and more working hours. And it's uh, increased the parental stress and depression and anxiety. According to our results uh, I, I showed before, uh, children from low lower economic families were high vulnerable to their parents' emotion. So uh, our study highlights the development threaten for children, especially from those underprivileged households in urban region. And uh, our, we uh, addressed several risks of children's learning and environment uh, and development from urban areas with social economic disparities. And there are some actions we can do to achieve the SDGs, including to improve living surroundings, uh, to reduce inequality in urban, and to uh, share the learning resources for children in urban area. Or uh, if you have other creative, innovative, innovative idea and the actions. And this is my talk. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Fan, and uh, for this wonderful research that you're doing. And uh, really long-term research, which is producing very interesting, interesting and important findings, uh, both on the side of uh, the impact of toxic metal concentrations, how they are accumulating uh, in uh, children's hairs and in you know populations around the city, but also the impacts, potential impacts of these on uh, the children and they are the future of generation. Right. So the impact that it is having on the learning environment, I'm sure that uh, there is a lot that the audience would like to interact with you on. And uh, we'll take up questions and have an interaction at the end uh, of the of this session here. So uh, thank you very much, Dr. Fan, and we'll come back to you at the end of the session today. I encourage the audience to, you know, keep their questions with them and we will take up questions in the interaction session. And my pleasure here to welcome Dr. Paramesh uh, for his uh, presentation on, I know the health impacts, the global health impacts, and we look forward you know, to your talk. Can you put the screen please? Uh, requesting Adish here to share the presentation for Dr. Parmesh. Okay, I think I have some problem here. Thank you. Hello, I'm sharing the screen. Do I stop sharing? Uh, or did you share? Uh, I, I will. I, I will do myself now. Pradeep is putting across. Yeah. 
if there's a problem, we have a uh, slides ready at Adish's end. So Pradeep, we can also show it. Oh, okay, okay, awesome, great, okay. Good morning, everybody. Can you hear me? Hello? We can hear you. Yes, sir. We can hear you. Okay, sir. Yeah. I bring greetings from the institution where I've been working. And at the outset, I sincerely thank all the organizers for extending the invitation for me to share some of our thoughts with all of you so that they can learn, will save our future and save our planetary health and ourselves. And let's see how we can take it forward. Having said that, our planet uh, is, uh, uh, and also our planet is 4,600 million year old. Human well-being over the long term depends on the well-being of our pla planet with the living and non-living systems. Environment is the mixture of living and non-living elements having the impact on human life by three ways. One, it supplies the resources for us. Second, we do assimilate the waste, what we generate, the Mother Earth manages it. Third, it helps in the sustenance of life for good health and for the existence of life as well. If we look at what the planet is, the biodiversity of the nature has created, beetles contribute at 22% on the globe, plants and algae 18%, and flies 9%. The vertebrates, where we belong to the vertebrates, is only 1%. I don't know why the God creator must have had an inordinate fondness for the beetles. They are the number one in the world, what has God has created. Each one has got some role to play for us to live peacefully. The vertebrate, what we have, is only 1% of the species. In them, 60% of the mammals are livestock, 30% are the humans, 4% are the wild animals. We are 8 billion population all over the world. If you take all the living species on the planet, we are only 0.01% of the living thing. But we destroyed 83% of the wild mammals and 50% of the plants. We polluted the five elements, what we call Panchabhutas from the old literature of India, our planet. We polluted the sky, we polluted the fire, earth, air, and water. Now we do three basic things for our sustenance of life. We need air, water, and food. You cannot live without breathing more than three minutes. We cannot live without drinking water more than three days. You cannot live without having food more than three weeks. The planetary health and human health are the two faces of the same coin. Of course, air pollution is an invisible cleaner, killer. It has got an impact from womb to tomb. Nearly 40% of the chronic lung diseases are from the air pollution. And 29% of the deaths from the lung cancer, 29% of the deaths from the heart diseases, 10% of the people, 10 years earlier, people are getting heart attack. Now, 24% of the deaths are from this stroke. Having said that, we look at the air pollution. Air is a mixture of many gases, moisture, and some inert material. Mother Nature has self-purification process, the imbalance in the process causing ill health. What we breathe, we have nitrogen nearly 79%, oxygen is at 20%, carbon dioxide is 0.04%, water vapor another 0.5%, and various pollutants are there. We measure say, seven pollutants air quality index in India. America, they measure only five. We added um, ammonia and lead. Most of them suspended particulate matter 10 and 2.5, sulfur dioxide, nitrogen dioxide, carbon monoxide, ozone, ammonia, and lead. Well, when we talk about the pollutant, 
we have to speak in terms of their size and their, how soluble they are in the water because the impact, which part of the respiratory tract impact, where they move further from there onwards. The bigger particle side, upper respiratory tract, from nose to thoracic in leg, they will deposit there, produce the inflammation, allergy, and uh, infection. PM2 point from below 10, they goes up to the central airways and bronchial tubes, bronchi, and it's 2.5 reaches the alveoli, where gas exchange happens. Less than 0.2 micron, they will cross the lung tissue, enter the bloodstream. These study, radioisotope study of inhalation of these particles have shown within one minute, enter the bloodstream and it showed all over the body within six minutes. You can see the, the impact is more predominantly on the upper respiratory tract sinuses and nose and also lungs and the genital tissues. In addition to that, water soluble, sulfur dioxide is highly water soluble. It predominantly affects the upper respiratory tract. And ozone is medium uh, soluble. It affects the central airways, trachea and bronchi. And the nitrogen dioxide, so with very low solubility, it will enter the small airways and enter the bloodstream also and circulate all over the body. That's how they have an impact, ill effect on the planet. So this is the carbon dioxide emission. If you look at what was there earlier, what is now, in the pre-industrial time, it is respiration of the animals and people, vegetation, breathing is to produce carbon dioxide volcanic eruptions, decomposition of the natural material, burning or natural burning of forest fires is to be there. Now, in addition to that, we have the deforestation for, for industrialization, cement jungle is coming, rapid urbanization, and vehicle, innumerable vehicle burning the fossil fuel. In addition to that, non-vegetarian population is increased, intense animal agriculture, they contribute significantly for the carbon dioxide production, global warming, climate change, if you look at from 1,000 years onwards, 1,000 up to mid-1800, the carbon dioxide is only 280 parts per million. The past two decades has gone up to 31%. Now, as of March 22nd, carbon dioxide 417 parts per million, very serious stage we are in now. I think the, if you look at the greenhouse gases, predominantly it's carbon dioxide, the amount is much more. Next comes the methane, nitrous oxide, fluorinated gases are much more potent, but their amount is small. We produce three times, that is contributing 9 billion tons more carbon dioxide than Mother Earth can able to manage. Having said that, we are in the stage of catastrophe, where our carbon dioxide is going to be 400, if you say me, 450s, and with our temperature is going to be 1.2 to 2.7 degrees by end of the century. If the carbon dioxide moves to up to 600, irreversible damage is going to happen on the planet. And if it goes more than 600, where the temperature is 5 degree and above, there is extinction of all the species, living species on the planet. We like to maintain the carbon dioxide 250 parts per million, keeping the temperature 1.5 degree by the end of the century. There are what government, each government has to do it, what individually we have to do it there are measures that have been taken forward. Having said that, let's move. What are, what are all the greenhouse gas emission? Economic sector, it comes number one in the industry, the agriculture, forestry, and other land use. And transport is the number three. Building construction is number four, and other energy sources. I think transport in Bangalore City, in our city, transport pollution is the number one cause. Healthcare industries contribute 4.4% in the global climate estimate. If you look at the what is the cost, the fossil fuel kills clean energy and saves lives. Coal, predominantly 95% is from the fossil fuel, coal and oil, 1% burning of the uh, agricultural waste, cement industry for about 3%. Indian carbon dioxide grew an estimated 4.6% in 2017 to about 2.4 billion tons. And what are the bad impact on the planet for its global warming climate is what we have now. There is significant increase in the extinction of rates of thousand times higher. And uh, the increased temperature causing extended the fire season, double the uh, potential burnable areas. Marine heat waves at least 34% more frequent, 
17% more longer since 1925. The Amazon rainforest transformed half of the Amazon basin into grassland, leading to increased global emissions. And wildlife in that tundra area burned increased ninefold across Siberia from 1996 to 2015. The severe drought in Brazil causing natural areas expected to quadruple. And there is significant increase in the, if the temperature goes up to two degrees, there is 50% of land and sea species threatened with extinction this century. And the freshwater fish reduced by 75% by 2075. And uh, turtles, 59% loss in oceanic green turtle, 67% Mediterranean nesting area is at loggerheads. And uh, thawing, permafrost, at two degrees increase in temperature, 15% could be lost by 2100, releasing 36 to 67 more billion tons of carbon to the atmosphere, enhancing global warming much more faster. In addition, 33 new gems have been identified. I'm sure we have to beware ourselves to, and prepare ourselves for future pandemics. And uh, corals, nearly 70 to 90 percent of the world coral reefs are projected to die. And ecosystem in uh, adaptability, ecosystem currently near or beyond their ability to adapt what we have been facing. And Arctic sea ice has been decreased and estimated 25% more, some 2 million square kilometers since the late uh, 1970. And air pollution to 6.5 6, 6 million people every year, 70% of the disease caused by environmental pollution is non-communicable diseases. 70% non-communicable diseases are from the air pollution. Asian countries, premature death happens, 79 lakh, 16,000. And in the premature death in India is a 24 uh, lakh, 60,000. 70% are air pollution, 20% from the water, and other sources only 10%. Having said that, what are the diseases we play? I think, uh, as I said, uh, it has got an impact, air pollution, womb to tomb, environmental exposure, constituting prenatal epigenetic changes and immunity. No doubt, genetics is the brick and mortar. It is the environment which is an architect who so brings out the allergic disease. Food, what mother takes, exposure to microbiota and farming, living in the farming environment and uh, of the caring mother are the protective to the child. Air pollution has a negative impact on the fetus and it causes air fixed airway obstruction. These children are repeated wheeze, recurrent wheeze, recurrent asthma and uh, chronic airway disease later in life. And who are all the people who are more vulnerable? Children, elderly people, children, people with uh, pre-existing illness, and people who have changed their life pattern. Urban population, the, who have changed their mode of transport, living in high-rise building, ill-ventilated offices, they contribute significantly for this uh, problem. Now, what are the diseases in the history? Lung takes the major brunt. You have the allergic disease, inflammatory disease, infection of upper respiratory tract, lower respiratory tract, interstitium, de uh, developmental, small airway, prematurity, small for dead children, uh, sudden infant death syndrome. These children, what happens? And the coagulopathy. What happens? The small particle, when cross the lungs, enter the bloodstream, the platelet congregation, it happens. That will carry the small clots to the placenta and they embedded there, interfering the nutrition to the baby. So these people could end up with a small, uh, their, their, their uh, premature death, sudden infant death, and uh, stillborn, and they're born with small airway obstruction. Other non-lung diseases are blood clots, I mentioned, increased blood pressure, cardiovascular disease, stroke, cancer, diabetes, and obesity, baldness, liver disease and liver cancer, a chronic kidney disease are related. Central nervous system, it has got an impact in three ways it will be affected by causing autism, dementia, Alzheimer's, cognitive performance, olfactory nerve and center involvement of the fetuses. Behavior problem on polluted days has shown increase in crime rate, impaired judgment, 
worse test scores and polluted days, reduced productivity in work, depression, anxiety, decreased intelligence quotients have been identified recently. Having said that, and I want to include the noise pollution, the air pollution also, Indian cities rank high on a noise pollution. As a chairman of the World Bank project in 2003 with the state of Karnataka, we did the air, water, soil, sound pollution, what measures you have to take forward. And the noise produces high frequency definition in newborn, produces premature birth for the mother, intrauterine growth failure, sleep disturbance, annoyance, headache, decreased work efficiency, poor school performance. And what you have to do, we have to quality education of the stakeholder is a must. We reduce the pollution at source, reduce the demand pollution at control, and the uh, government has to take for what we can do, and researchers have to do the think their own country, think locally, act locally, propagate globally, as it is needed, take the legal activism to propagate our good wishes for the survival of life. And what each one of us we can do, save energy at home, use less energy, use LED bulbs that saves energy, but without blue color, that's the most important. Wash your laundry with cold water, sun dry clothes by hanging, and save energy at home. Use less energy, uh, I think this, I finished it. Second is the clogged roads and vehicles. I think uh, slow traffic produces more ca carbon monoxide, five times more, reduces the greenhouse gases, and help your health fitness, use your carpool, consider train or bus for long distance. Eat more vegetables, encourage plant-based food to reduce carbon footprint, which uses less energy, land and water. One kilogram of vegetable produces one kg of carbon uh, footprint. One kg of meat produces five to 35 kg carbon monoxide footprint. Red meat has the highest uh, carbon margin that will be. Throw away the less food, wasting sources and energy to grow, produce, package and transport and also leftover food, use a compost. And also the re reduce reuse. Electronics, clothes, other items can be re reused. Materials manufacture and transport causing a lot of carbon footprint. A need-based purchase is needed. Repair what you can, recycle. If you look at the resource and the Terry did do the study, America only 30 pieces, they reuse it. Most of them throw it out but we are reusing it 70% and the same method has to be continued. And change your source of energy, wind, solar energy, uh, defreeze the refrigerator, better cross ventilation, sunlight as per our needs. I think uh, to build our houses, what you call Vedic mathematics, we used to call was to build our houses in that context. And switch electric vehicles, red, for, which reduces air pollution, fewer greenhouse gases emission than diesel and petrol. Choose eco-friendly product, use local and seasonal foods, purchase from companies who committed to the cutting the emissions. Speak up, the way forward lies in a quality education that impacts the socioeconomic burden for sustenance of life. Our society, our natural national ethos is Vasudaiva Kutungava. That means we have one earth, one family, one future. I think let's propagate it to the societies, all our stakeholders local leaders, policy makers. Ladies and gentlemen, these are all the issues. How much you can say have been highlighted here. Is each one, teach one, plant one, train, maintain, maintain it. I think one tree, each family grows, it gives oxygen for four people free of cost. Thank you very much for your patient hearing. Thank you so much, Dr. Parmesh. And as always, you know, it was enlightening and uh, also you know, waking us up you know, to look at what is happening around us and how, you know, as an individual, we all need to act and bring change you know, in, for our lives as well as to save the planet. Uh, yes. So thank you to both speakers, you know, Dr. Parmesh and Dr. Fan. Uh, with this, we start the uh, interaction session and uh, we encourage uh, any of you to uh, type out your answers or uh, raise your hands and you know we'll give you an opportunity uh, to interact with the uh, speakers here uh, to get started uh, on this session you know i have uh, 
something coming to my mind from both the uh, presentations, Dr. Fan, uh, to begin with, and then also to uh, Dr. Parmesh. Uh, Dr. Fan, I think one your research throws up uh, very interesting questions you know, as to uh, the impacts of uh, heavy metal concentrations, uh, especially it says that uh, heavy metal concentrations in urban areas such as this, probably coming from air pollution or from other means, they really have an impact on people. You can see the evidence uh, in terms of, uh, you know, the hair uh, residues. Um, and then, you know, consequently, you're trying to connect it with uh, learning outcomes or, you know, learning environment. So that is the entire you know, linkage. But I think uh, the common question you know, to you as well as to Dr. Paramesh you know, is that what we also saw was the larger question of how these impacts happen on individuals in a manner which is not uniform in the sense that what we saw here that families which have lower income families that have uh, lower average education of parents uh, broadly the impact of the uh, heavy metal concentrations the hair residues is more uh, probably as you hinted also coming from the learning outcomes are also coming from other uh, common factors such as you know the parents uh, socioeconomic status but what was interesting was that the environmental impact and the health impact was also non uniform there is an equity you know aspect to it so uh, dr fan the question to you is that uh, as a researcher when you are also distributing these uh, uh, the cohorts you know and trying to look at the methodology you know and trying to see is the question of differential impact that is uh, the observation that the problem is actually impacting people in a different manner okay it is actually uh, uh, today morning i was reading that uh, uh, the the people who are getting impacted more by climate change are not necessarily those who are causing climate change more i mean um, the, the the there is a large element of equity you know into this whole picture uh, what do you have to comment on this dr fan and then what is the consequences of that on the action that one needs to take because the action needs to be taken by a certain set of people and probably the impacts are are more on a certain other set of people. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for your questions. Well, I think uh, the, uh, my, my research was uh, we we did the cohort study and we find uh, these results. And uh, those uh, like the children development, uh, we, we did not use uh, to have the uh, medical, uh, how to say, uh, we, uh, this is the uh, one phenomenon, yeah. And the action, uh, well, I think that uh, maybe in equality urban, uh, problem. Uh, that means. Uh, well, I think that. Uh, it's a. Uh, it's a, results that. Uh, if the urban development uh, to uh, uh increase and the pollution increase, it will make uh it will that this phenomenon phenom phenomenon to become more visible. So uh actions maybe uh you you ask me what. What actions we can do, right? Yes, Doctor Fan. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I, I think that maybe uh, if we can uh, share uh, the learning environment, uh, we we because we don't as the SDG goals, uh, we don't we want to eliminate the inequality of urban development. So maybe some actions that we can do, maybe we can share the uh uh like learning resource like uh, if the some toys from uh the high economic families they can provide uh, uh they used and they can provide that they are uh, not used anymore and to other uh families with lower social economic family because they cannot buy the new one maybe like these actions that we can do is to uh, balance the economic uh the social economic uh, disparities uh, in the urban region uh, like that actions and also we need to improve our uh, environment and to educate uh, 
the uh, some social some lower uh, social economic family to more to enhance the awareness of uh, their to increase their awareness of the toxicants such as uh, the heavy metals. Uh, yeah, I, I well, uh, some something actions that I I think is about this, but uh, if uh, there's another actions, I think we can discuss here. I think, yeah. Sure, sure, Dr. Pan. Thank you so much. And also that uh, uh, when you compared in the one of the last tables. Uh, your results with the results from many other cities, uh, it also showed a similar pattern in terms of you know, cadmium and mercury. And that actually tells us a lot in terms of common pollutants you know, being yes. across in cities globally. And uh, probably there are some simple actions, basic actions that need to be taken uh, to prevent you know cadmium and mercury pollution, which probably as coming out from your study have a more significant impact on the outcomes, uh, learning outcomes and learning environment outcomes than the other heavy metal concentrations uh, in your study. So probably uh, what your study also shows that we can actually zoom down specifically on certain uh, pollutants such as cadmium and uh, mercury. And this might be something for all the other countries which are joining here, especially India and many other countries uh, for us to learn and also to think about in our respective no cities. Thank you so much, Dr. Fan, and we'll come back to you uh, again. Dr. Paramesh, again, a similar you know, follow-up question to you, in the sense yeah. that you uh, put forward a very wide span of you know how uh, changes are happening, and I think it is great to see all of them together in, the, in one place. Uh, the question to you, and especially as your research has been a lot on the pulmonary aspects and you know on the impacts of uh, air pollutants, is that do you see similar patterns as uh, in India, you know, from your research as what Dr. Fan has seen in terms of who gets impacted more, uh, who gets affected more? Is it the same across all socioeconomic segments or is it that certain segments of population get affected more from human health, from, from these health problems as more? Can you throw some light, you know, on, on those questions? Yes. Uh, it is the urban population suffer the most uh, allergic diseases than the rural population. Rural population suffer a little more of infections than the urban population. And also the social, low socioeconomic population live in the very crowded area and traffic is very high. The pollution will be very high in, in those areas. Those are the people who suffer that one. And also the heavy metals is a concern for us also, as you rightly pointed out. Uh, Dr. Yen also mentioned about it. I think, uh, Lead poisoning was there is a totally related uh, earlier. We used to worry about the lead poisoning, heavy metal. I think here is the best way to checking. Many parents don't like the blood in the newborn babies. We did it. They don't want the blood checking. Here is the best way of identifying long-term deposition. It will show it. At the right thing, she has corrected it. And also our blood level was correlated with the air, air pollution from the use of leaded petrol. I think our paper was published in Taiwan much, much earlier, first time it was published. And afterwards, we had an international conference in Bangalore. And afterwards, I think we uh, influenced the government. Uh, banning the leaded petrol came in 1999 from the work in Bangalore. Sir. Now, I think as we rightly pointed out, the computer and the waste and all this becoming more and more, air pollution and also the water pollution coming from the cadmium, mercury, Arsenic, all these things is coming up there. Copper, everything is coming up there. And as Coimbatore in the Chennai, Madras area, that is the capital of the mercury poison, sir. Because thermometer used to make there, they stopped it. This US company used to make uh, uh, pharmaceutical, I mean, uh, cosmetics, that Fonts company used to make it. They have stopped it. I think we had a lot of uh, mercury poisoning there. Now it has come down, sir. I think uh, we have to look into these things because water is getting polluted. A lot of uh, these heavy metals polluted now along with the uh, other uh, biologicals. And I think we have to look into those aspects. In addition, the radium content of the water is also becoming more and more. 
where as the water goes down. These are all the issues we have to look into in the future. I think, Dr. Parmesh, one thing which you mentioned, which is uh, uh, which gives a lot of hope, especially for young career researchers, you know, who yeah. have joined this talk and are listening here, is that as you rightly mentioned, the research work on leaded petrol and the impact mm. that it has on urban health, mm. it finally led to newer norms and the fact mm. that now we have changed, you know, after many yes. years. And as we know, uh, yeah. change in policy and thereby later on in practice sometimes can take decades, right? Because yeah. if you take, for example, the uh, vehicle industry, you know, things have been rolled out, yes. norms have been rolled out, policies need to change, and then the industry has to change. So research that, uh, for example, uh, young researchers like Dr. Fan is doing now, which throws light on uh, mercury and cadmium, can actually help creation of new policy norms in the future and thereby future health impact. So this tells a lot about the work that is happening on in future earth and the work of young career researchers and gives us a lot of hope, you know, for uh, impact in the future. Yes, Prithi. Yes, definitely. It gives a lot of impact in the, in the context only. And uh, thank you very I, much. Okay. Please go ahead. Yes, Prithi, go ahead. I'll Prithi, speak go ahead. Dr. Parmesh, I think he's asking. After Dr. Parmesh, no, 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 answers, please go I ahead. can raise the question. You, can, you raise the question. I think that's okay. okay. He, he covered uh, it very well. Yeah. So I had a question, in fact, for all the speakers and also the moderator, Dr. Sundar, here, because I know on this platform, uh, we get together from various angles to action. So we have a, a young career researcher here doing her research i just want to ask dr fan what are the ground well it's to dr fan to dr parmesh i know that dr parmesh has been the lead of many organizations which bring out policies which bring out recommendations to starting from who to various other organization just wanted to also ask dr parmesh how much time does it take for it to formulate into policies and what are the challenges struggles or the limitations that you face in your area that's to dr parmesh and to dr sundar i know that you work a lot with the community and also, I've read many of your works which are uh, related to reversing the fluorosis process, and you work a lot with the community. So here we have three different uh, resource people coming from various angles, trying to do the same thing, trying to implement it. Just want to ask each of you, where are the challenges and how can we improve the system and communicate better so that policy is better informed? So just the challenges, and we would like to hear your story to all the speakers here, to Dr. Fan, then Dr. Parmesh, and to Sundar. Uh, Dr. Fan, uh, uh, so Smriti would like to know the challenges that you that you face in communication, in communicating, right, the research. Is that is that right, Smriti? Uh, the challenges that you face in communicating uh, your research to different audiences, and uh, what are your experiences with that? Well, uh, uh, the challenge is that um, maybe uh, when we did this research, we need to uh, we need to have some talk to the family family members, and uh, sometimes the uh, the parents will ask us. So, in your study, in your results, what can what should uh, I what should I do to better to uh better for our child because uh, we did the our cohort study are mainly from the children who uh less than six years old and the the parents will care about this but sometimes uh we have results we cannot uh, uh we cannot uh, clearly uh suggest them what kind of uh like what kind of food that I sh uh, they should provide to their children because uh we don't know uh each foods uh the heavy metals from different sources and even under the climate change maybe that will be changed 
the uh, con the heavy metal concentration in food, or uh, they will change uh, the uh, pollutants uh, in the environment. So uh, we did we show a lot of uh, results uh, to uh, our research that uh, people has a risk to the heavy metal concentration to the heavy metal exposure. But uh, I think the challenge is that how we can uh, give our research informations to the uh to the public that is a, a big uh, gap that we need to provide our informations and try to transform to the language that uh, can talk to the uh, all the, uh, the public yeah because they want the information is not uh this can affect this these are the adverse effects they want information is that what they can do, what they can do, they can change their behavior to, uh, like, um, uh, to, uh, like which kind of food, uh, but uh, when they eat that food, they can reduce the heavy metal exposure, but they cannot, uh, uh, to reduce the nutrients they give their children. Yeah, I think uh, there's a a, a gap that. Uh, the academic research results that can uh, give to uh, that cannot uh, provide to the public. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Fan. And very interesting to know, you know, the challenges and how you are trying your best to communicate and put it across, you know, in terms of children, nutrition, you know, and their future in terms of learning. Thank you so much. Uh, Dr. Parmesh, yeah, I mean, like, what is this latency time? You know, <laughs> what is your experience? I think uh, my work was after 20 years work we published. It's only professional people contradicting. They are the one blocking all these things. I think the politician they want that one. If there is a you are not unanimity in this one, how do you implement that one? Convincing the policy makers is very important. Unless there's a political will, you cannot block anything. I was happy with leaded petrol. We did it only two years. But we had the coordinator as a, a, a retired a naval chief. He had directly go to the prime minister's office. That we could be able to do it on that year. That only took only two years. Tobacco smoke, we did about uh, seven and a half years work. And that day, SM Krishna, our chief minister, had to take care of the grandchildren, uh, his uh, grandchildren. He knows me very well. We are the tennis players. We know each other. And the same day, he felicitated me, state award he given to the environmental issues. He announced banning the tobacco smoke and said 2001. 2000, the Supreme Court banned in the other thing. It all depends on how you have communication with the society. And, uh, and also, the gaps has to be filled. Other people should not keep on questioning and everything is not right, is not right. We hypothesize. Sometimes it took a long time. Sometimes it took 40 years for us to continue the same work. Some work. And heavy bags, I was telling for the power, long period of time. Air pollution, heavy bags causing spinal problem. They're going to, in time of days, people will suffer from that. That's why recently it has come, 2018, not more than 10% of the body weight. Because what happens, air pollution, you have air trapping, elevated shoulder, angulation, spinal health, and bent forward. Those people suffer the most, prime of that age. So this is what some rules have come because of that. I think a gap has to be, as a fan has said, gap has to be filled up. You have to unanimity, forcefully, professional organization will do it. And also right people have to be contacted. And... Uh, the political to make their they want the economic burden we have to highlight them economic burden we have to we have to work on that one so what is science uh, that one how much it costs somebody has to do it uh, other uh, people work out the economic burden it's what happened the urban area they want to take away the our golf club now you are 50 acre center of the city i told them you should not be taken center of the city is a lung space for us in the main downtown, always two degree temperature higher, mainly come from the cement uh, jungle. Cement emits at night time. 
that only greenery it helps. The recent studies have shown one rupee you spent, one dollar you spent on one inch of space for the greenery, it gives 37 times more health benefits, not 37%. 37 more percent. These are all the studies I've done in uh, UK, recently has been published. I think which you are highlighting not to take the green space, even one inch land is there, put some greenery. That gives enough oxygen for the green rates for the eyes. This is how we have to convince them economic wise and all those things. And as society, you are away, social organization, social clubs, and, so, and uh, service clubs, we have to utilize th those policy makers. That's the only way. There is no other way. Uh, meantime, we'll have fill up the scientific gap. You have to fill it up. With young researcher, each country has got its own way. We prioritize whatever needs. We work on that. Yeah. Dr. Parmesh, you know, I have noted down your 10% of body weight. You know, uh, uh, I mean, really, I mean, these are... So, I think uh, the ability to absorb extraordinary research and then put it into such simple forms you know, which can then be taken up and acted upon. That thing, that is that is the difficult thing, right? So I think many things that you said, right? Uh, Smriti, uh, responding to uh, your question on, you know, how do we interact with community and bring about change? So we work on chronic long-term uh, health issues such as disability, physical disability from water contamination. I'll give you an example, quick example. Uh, there is this uh, village which is in the district of Gaya in Bihar in Eastern India. And people go into this place, you know, to worship the uh, ancestors. It's an ancestor uh, ritual worship you know, place. And there is this mountain uh, just next to that, you know, people actually go and worship. It just happens to be, it's a coincidence that the other side of the mountain is a village, which is which has extraordinary contamination of fluoride and extraordinary fluorosis, skeletal fluorosis. So people of that uh, village were believing for a long period of time, this is some kind of curse from ancestors, and, you know, I mean, like, this is something of a fate that we are suffering because of, you know, the place that we are living in. So people, the community researchers and the social activists who actually went there faced a big resistance for the first few months. I mean, people did not understand why there was a big resistance. I mean, you go forward with extraordinary expensive solutions and everything, and then it fails because people don't accept it. But then what really, uh, you know, really changed people's mind was something super simple you know, that we heard, you know, later, which was just uh, showing uh, visual, showing things visually, you know, to people, color change, water tests, you know, which can be done, you know, which very low cost and test. sometimes, you know, we hear about these things again and again. And uh, I mean, sometimes hearing something again and again gives us more, more confidence, but sometimes it also loses its appeal. But it is true also that simple things like Dr. Parmesh said, 10% body weight, traffic signal kind of thinking and this kind of visual color test that was done on this sort of village where there is a deep belief connected with ancestor rituals, not just here in Bihar, but it's of this entire South Asian kind of, you know, communities who go there, but that changed. But it took a couple of years, you know, for people to change and now they have gone towards safer water. So, yeah, I mean, uh, the communication has to be simple and clear and people really believe if they can connect it to their uh, benefits, right, over the long term. I think we have to believe that people will believe it, right? I think there is an innate uh, ability inside human beings to appreciate basic logic and science, apart from, you know, all the beliefs that we all come with. And we have to constantly believe in that and try, try, keep trying. Uh, so coming back, Smriti, you know, uh, can we have, you know, anybody here within the audience come forward with their insights, uh, questions before we conclude you know shortly in few minutes anybody who has last thoughts or question uh to dr parmesh here uh to dr fan here any any of us please come forward uh, and we have one, like time for the last minute or so. yeah. yes sir, this I'm one sure. question uh which has been posted is there lead used as stabilizers in oil by pikash okay uh I guess this uh, question probably uh, who wants to take it up, Dr. Parmesh or Dr. Fan? Well, um, I think uh, in Taiwan, I forgot which year, but now I know that in Taiwan, the oil, uh, the uh, the traffic gas, uh, they are not uh, at the date anymore to 
uh, stable the the gas now, but in the in the past time it did that. So, but uh, but now the the lead in do uh in the air are also a lot of uh lead from the traffic because of the past or or the other uh like factory. But uh yeah, I have I have know that uh, in Taiwan because of the policy they cannot add lead into the gas to stabilize the oil now. Yeah. Thank you very much, Dr. Fan, and hope the uh, the person who asked the question. I mean, you can also get in touch with the researchers here later uh, if you want to engage in more detail. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Parmesh and Dr. Fan. It was a fascinating, I mean, insight. I mean, uh, into uh, such vast, you know, areas. It has really woken us up, and you know, uh, uh, on a day like this, you know, when people are going around with festivals and you know, relaxing. I mean, we are in a different mood. Um, really wanting to get out and have some change happening. So thank you so much, um, and uh, thank you everybody here you know, who has come uh, and attended and asked some important questions and learned. We encourage you to get in touch with these researchers. Encourage them uh, also, uh, you know, in their career because it's very difficult to be a science researcher working on these issues. Um, and please encourage and please, you know, uh, get in touch and help help out and uh, work with each other and collaborate. So thank you so much. And over to you, uh, Dolly, here towards the conclusion and for this webinar. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, finally, I want to thank uh, thanks for the two speakers for their wonderful uh, sharing. I think the two speakers just provided two perspectives, macro and micro. Dr. Paramesh uh, takes a macro a look at the impact of climate change, and Dr. Ban uh, explored the relationship between uh, societal, economic status, status, and the children health at a micro level. Moderator, our moderator, Dr. Sounder, for your great hosting, raising questions and the reflection. And also thanks uh features uh South Asia hubs, our deputy director uh Smirti, and our science officer Adishi uh Rayan Harishta for organizing this joint uh talk. For Fisheries Taipei, we really help to provide a platform for uh, to share a sustainability science research. Uh, senior scholars like Dr. Paramish are also welcome to conduct inter uh, interactive exchanges and uh, seek opportunities for research uh, uh, cooperation. We really help that uh, scientific knowledge can really be put into action. So through this online sharing series, we have indeed led to some uh, research collaboration, some um, successful collaborations, such as the Bayman Forum pet pro project. So finally, uh, you are welcome to continue to follow the relevant hub and also welcome to our Facebook fan page and the Twitter. And uh, if you are also interested to uh, share, share your research, please uh, feel free to contact us. Thank you.